following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And we've got a market that's flat as a pancake for the S&P cash. Literally flat at the moment. Uh, let us uh, update the Dow on those so we can get a good look at it. Up 43 on the uh, Dow, uh, down 14 on the NASDAQ. Russell's down about 12. Um, look to me like they've been trying to hold the S&P up through the rest of the day. Options uh, show something like 29.25 as uh, the close today. Um, but uh, there may be extenuating circumstances. But um, I wouldn't be surprised. A lot of action in the last 30 minutes of the day. Don't get too fired up. I think everything's over. Um, expiration day, a lot of times it's all about the expiration and not the early part of the day. They've been trying to uh, run out the clock on um, options premiums throughout the day. So uh, and there may be some very interesting plays. But again, it's going to be that last 30 I think 30 or 45 minutes of the day. Question is, after all these huge, uh, this huge rally, is anybody going to want to sell going into the weekend? Uh, we got a market that doesn't have a lot of volume so far, didn't, uh, for being up here. And you want to kind of think about that. Dollar index is off 36 cents at 95.78. Uh, when we look at the actual volumes, though, just doing about four billion shares as we start the show now would be pretty good on a regular day uh, and but even on options expiration you're hoping uh, for probably eh, maybe another billion billion and a half today if there was any kind of action whatsoever at these highs but certainly um, it's not an overwhelming endorsement of a breakout at the highs of the S&P cash. We have been a little bit light in the volume. Uh, but again, uh, it's not uh, a giant Roman candle going off. And with the light volumes in many of the stocks uh, itself, you, I kind of feel like I'm uh, out there checking gasoline cans with a sparkler, looking down in it. Well, maybe there's some gasoline in it. Maybe there's not. Oh, well. <laughs> Uh, just ask for a crispy critter. Uh, but that's kind of it. I, I, you know, you really have to be uh, very nervous about highs on light volume. We'll look at some charts today. Uh, the rest of it, uh, just kind of uh, here and there, nothing to really report home about. And uh, many of the stocks just flat. Uh, Tesla uh, up only 62 cents, which is rather sedate for it and of course a little bit more uh, pulling back but uh, well we'll look at many stocks today we'll do a little bit of history and then we'll get on with the rest of the shoe the following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. I think we already did that then it's all just a little bit of history repeating on this day in 1990 uh, ran also in the news, earthquake near the Caspian Sea in Iran kills an estimated 50,000 and injures another 135,000 people on this day in 1990. The 7.7 .7 magnitude tremor wrecked havoc on uh, basically eh, a bunch of stones thrown up to create houses in the area. Uh, we, in one of the uh, rare chances of uh, actually uh, giving a handshake uh, for people who want to kill us, on a daily basis, at least the leadership, let's put it that way, who uh, want to kill the great white Satan. Uh, we offered them uh, a lot of help, and they actually took it for all of one day. Then they ran everybody off, 
uh, and about another 10,000 people died because they couldn't get to them or get help to them. Uh, but uh, eh, sometimes you just can't help people no matter what you do. But on this day, uh, Iran in the news for another reason. Okay, uh, let's take a look at here and just see if there's anything else uh, that I wanted to bring up. Of course, um, we had a refinery kind of blow up uh, earlier in the day, and that put some fire uh, under uh, the crude, a little bit under the crude market, and more uh, about the uh, gasoline market. Gasoline's up seven cents, uh, which is about four percent. Crude oil's up to fifty-seven fifty-two. Uh, any bigger demand? The answer is no. Uh, just a disruption of possible supply. Uh, looking at the uh, Baker Hughes numbers that come out at one, uh, and of course the numbers from uh, natural gas yesterday, there just isn't any kind of shortage of energy, at least in this country. And again, the only thing you can do to get these things moving is blow up a refinery. Just about, we've got plenty of crude and oil and, uh, and just what, uh, several short years ago, we were told there was literally nothing you can do. Doesn't matter how much you drill, we're not gonna have uh, enough oil. And of course it was peak oil and then you couldn't drill enough oil. And then we did. I don't hear any of those people apologizing for the blowhardy uh, calls for the end of the world, but it's rather rare. Uh, gold uh, hanging right there at 1399, uh, up about three bucks. So a huge move continues, unabated. Uh, and that's about it. Well, let's get to some other charts here. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. And uh, of course, the thing that you really want to look at is these leaders who seem like they've gotten to the point where it's very interesting on whether or not they can actually do anything. He had kind of some little uh, interesting candles in a lot of these yesterday. No real pullback today. And of course, today's options expiration. So Monday and Tuesday are options rollover days. Wednesday, generally, you get moving on a different uh, track of where you're, the market was actually going. And of course, that takes us really next week into uh, what is the 4th of July uh, weekend setting up through next week. You got uh, basically fun buying next Friday. And you probably maybe get a little bit. They may just mark prices up. Uh, and then of course, the first couple of days of July before you get to the 4th, which is on a Thursday. Uh, at that point, we'll uh, continue to see what happens. But, uh, man, we're going to go into the 4th of July probably with some incredibly light volume. And, again, um, doesn't mean it's going to turn around, but it does mean that you have to be very wary. Um, kind of like uh, carrying eggs around. You probably don't want to be juggling them. But uh, with the, you know, very light volume and uh, any kind of news, you got to be, uh, yeah, you got to be have a quick mouse finger. Hmm. Doesn't that sound like a uh, something? Quick mouse finger. Is that a disease or syndrome? Quick mouse finger. I think it does sound like something. We'll be back in a minute. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we have a question about uh, platinum. And we're looking at the PPLT, which is platinum ETF. Um, you had a nice test of the previous May 30th low. Uh, not a lot of volume in this ETF. The problem, though, is the volume came in about the same, so you really don't have any indication of a real big uh, bounce coming in the market. Uh, platinum being a very industrial metal opposed to gold, where people hang on to the coins a great deal more. Uh, two things kind of working long term at least psychologically against higher platinum prices. That is one, uh, cars turning to uh, batteries. Uh, therefore, they don't need uh, platinum for the exhaust, which is um, for the, uh, uh, the catalytic converter. That's the single biggest use of platinum. Uh, also, uh, some uh, uses of fuel cells um, that had traditionally used gold and platinum uh, they found a better, cheaper catalyst to put in those fuel cells over the last year. Still expensive, still uh, interesting, but it's not one of those things where uh, people are trying to use more platinum, uh, actually trying to use less. Um, I think you want this thing to test uh, 7450 uh, and bounce back up uh, to actually signal some kind of low. Uh, but really, this would be a giant bet on a trade deal. You get a trade deal, this thing's probably going to rock it. Uh, without a trade deal, it probably languishes. Uh, not like gold, where everybody's buying it for a place to hide their money under the mattress, especially people in China who fear that their banking system could go poof in an instant, uh, who are continuing to use Bitcoin to move cash out of China and uh, into other countries where they can buy gold, which 
continues to be, you know, a lot of very, very nervous folk from what I read over in China. Um, and of course, especially in Hong Kong. Talked to Larry Pezzavento a little bit about that yesterday, but uh, continues to be something that not many people, you don't see it on the front page. And that is, of course, that law where China can extradite anybody they want without any proof from Hong Kong. Therefore, if you do anything they do not like, they're letting you know. Uh, a lot of protests over there, but uh, all for naught, because uh, what are you going to do? They're just going to take over and stomp you down. And uh, it was kind of interesting because uh, when I was working in the 90s, uh, of course, the discussion then was whether or not the English would hand over Hong Kong to the Chinese. And they did. And we had a bunch of workers uh, up in uh, Markham, Ontario, Canada, uh, that had come from Hong Kong. And they lived there for about three, three and a half years. Then they all decided they just couldn't stand it and went home, uh, back to Hong Kong. Uh, now, they probably are rich uh, and worried, extremely worried. Uh, just say the wrong thing, you'll be extradited and never heard from again in China. So it continues to be an issue. But um, I don't see any real bullish stuff going on in platinum. Uh, from a fundamental standpoint, the chart here, uh, still needs to retest a little bit under 75. And again, probably the biggest thing uh, going forward would be, uh, it's not that they don't use any platinum in fuel cells, uh, but they're using a great, they found ways to use a great deal less. Um, this potentially could be far bigger uh, for platinum in the long term, but we're just now seeing uh, South Korea, Japan, uh, and Europe start looking very, very hard at fuel cells with some of these new uh, cars and uh, fuel cells from Toyota Panasonic uh, and Mitsubishi uh, really kind of digging into it with BMW, too. Batteries uh, for most of the car companies, um, everybody continues to look at them as a uh, way to get into electricity today. Uh, very few people uh, in those big car companies think that that's the long-term answer uh, and are looking at fuel cells as a way to get fuel or to get electricity into car basis. Of course, a lot of cars catching on fire, and uh, even Apple today had to recall a bunch of MacBook Pros laptops uh, because uh, they're all catching fire. Uh, batteries uh, inherently... Uh, Lithium ion batteries have issues, and until they solve those issues, which they may not be able to, uh, will continue to be a problem. So I would keep, if you're really expecting platinum to run, you really have to, I think, believe in two things. One, a trade deal, and two, a long-term um, move into fuel cells, but that's a tough thing uh, to go. You need uh, places to plug in your fuel cells. And right now, there's only about four of them in California, maybe five or six. Uh, and that makes it extremely tough. Um, but um, now in Europe, Japan, uh, that's a different story. They are, ma the government is massively uh, looking at it. And platinum is one of the things you need for fuel cells. But again, a lot of these things you got to hit, there's some kind of magic uh, tipping point uh, for LCD screens compared to TV tubes that we had forever. Uh, it was 2004 in China trying to corner the market in rare earth minerals uh, for phosphor tubes. And uh, that dramatically rose the price of TV tubes and instantly lit off uh, a massive drop in LCD display prices and television uh, came down as volume picked up. So you kind of need the same thing. There's going to be some kind of tipping point on fuel cells if it's going to become specific, and it may be something like a disruption uh, in price, but uh, uh, in price of crude or oil. Uh, but again, if you're in Japan, where are you going to get that power? It's going to be nuclear, and everybody's kind of hazed on that. So that would be it. Anyway, uh, yeah, we're off a couple points on the SP cash, so just not that much happening. 
to, to okay question what are we going to be talking about today with Tom O'Brien uh, to, to oh we're going to talk a little bit about slack and the differences we'll pick up where we left off yesterday a little bit so you know a little bit more I noticed that slack was kind of And see what is that uh, to um, uh, work? W O R K. Okay. Uh, question: uh, Fuel cells for laptops? Yeah. In fact, those are fairly prevalent, um, and really the quietest subs in the world right now. Submarines are fuel cells from Sweden and Norway. They've made a bunch of them. Since they don't have to go very far, all they want them is absolutely quiet. And so they fill up the submarines with uh, hydrogen and uh, oxygen. Those things can go out there and not even make a peep. It really scares the Russians. Of course, they don't need to go too far. Couldn't take one across the ocean. But uh, for what they do in the North Sea and the Baltic area up there, uh, they work well. We'll be back in a minute. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back uh, to, to take a quick peek at the markets already in progress over most of TFNN. And we get back up here. Nope. Oh. 
That's why I want. Couldn't see it. I'd gone to the wrong page. Uh, off one and a half points on the S&P. Cash Dow's up 25. Nasdaq's off 18. And Russell's off 14. Uh, as we hit these highs. So, again, not much uh, happening. Uh, an incredibly quiet market. And uh, you always, uh, especially when you get these markets that have ultra-tight movements, you always uh, have to watch for that single tweet or news that hits the market that can literally uh, whack these markets or move them higher. I don't think there's much that you could do to move it higher, but I think you could get the wrong uh, or news or a news flash that rapidly moves this market. It is kind of tough, uh, but at the moment, uh, just uh, holding the market higher without much movement. Uh, to do, do, okay. Okay. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, you can put a uh, message in the den, or you can email me at path at tfnn.com. Okay. What else do we have going on? Uh, did I actually send that yet? Let me see if I send anything. Nope. I haven't sent anything quite yet. Oh, I remember why. My computer had to be rebooted right before the show, and I forgot to do something. So I've got to hang on just one second, see if I can't get this up and running. And we will move it along. There we go. Um, okay. Few of these things out of the way. Okay, now we're back in gear. Uh, let's see what's going on. Let's take a look at some of the stocks on my scan and see if there's anything here. Again, uh, options uh, expiration is today. Uh, Monday and Tuesday will be options expiration rollover. If Monday's higher, look for Tuesday lower. If Monday's lower, look for Tuesday higher and the uh, market to actually uh, move on to what could probably be a very light volume move into the 29th when we look for President uh, Trump and President Z uh, to uh, go into uh, the trade talks at the G20 mo uh, meeting in Japan. The uh, question is whether or not we have, hear any yelling or screaming before we actually get into that time frame. Uh, to, to do, what else do we have? Um, you had a few stocks that actually broke out this week. Uh, AECOM, A-E-C-O-M is the uh, technology is the company. ACM is the uh, actual signal. He had a huge volume day back on the 17th, uh, way back this earlier this week, on the 17th or last week, um, up on three point, man, almost 3.2 million shares. Uh, that was going against uh, about 1.9 million shares on August 7th. So you got a valid break. Uh, breakout. It is kind of pulling back on fairly light volume today. You want to look at that one at about 35.50 as it has it made a valid breakout. Some of these other stocks uh, that have come back up didn't have that kind of volume. Uh, Amgen certainly kind of looks like an ABC on the way down. Energy off this May 15th low has been tepid at best. Uh, when you look at the actual retracements for these, uh, you're basically at the 618 uh, today. Uh, that was 185.19. Got to 185.44. But again, day's not over yet, but the volume is 1.8 million shares. Now you're going back into these three uh, down uh, crows, what, three black crows probably? what a lot of people would call these going back to April 18th, 17th, and 16th. Uh, when these came down on up to 8 million shares, you're now at the very base of that with 1.8 million shares. So uh, even if it goes higher, it's going to take a great deal of time to dig through that. Some of the other biotechs in this space uh, are Bluebird Bio. Uh, this one may be making a low 
uh, if it can do it with light volume today. June 12th, we had 600,000 shares. Today, 463 already. So maybe, maybe not. Uh, but it's at least not huge volume blowing out the lows in this. Bristol Myers Squib. I don't know where the squib came from. I can't remember the history of that. Uh, this is back up against the May 3rd high, $48.40 with 24 million shares. Got into it with 9.4 million shares uh, yesterday and just kind of going sideways here. Energy was fairly tepid again off that May 29th low. Uh, to, to, to what else do we have? Uh, Charter, which has just been nickel and diming everybody higher actually did roll a little bit today. It still hasn't uh, broken the trend line higher, but it could quickly uh, be back at 380 if it did. Cisco, of course, uh, fairly decent earnings, uh, but has just actually made a fairly nice W pattern, kind of completing that today, uh, but at the same time with some decent volume. Uh, already 19.3 million shares compared to a 19... 7 million shares back on April 30th, but again, right at the breakout area, but not a real sign of strength, just kind of the same kind of volume. CSX, another one that's fairly close, it's actually trying to fill this gap that goes back to the May 7th uh, drop lower with uh, 5.4 million shares. Yesterday, you got into 5.1 million shares, but today you went and filled half that gap with about 2.7 million shares so far today. So again, some light volume pushes into these highs and you know maybe they stay up here and kind of eat through the top, uh, but my guess is that these things are gonna slowly eat through the top if they do going into the summer. And of course, uh, the question is whether or not you hit any air pockets on the way down. Finistar uh, could be that. Uh, to, 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 eh, just a retracement. So far, just a 50% retracement, uh, but it gapped down a little bit today. Uh, still hasn't busted any of the trend lines higher. But again, just not a lot of volume in these to go push stuff around. Other biotechs, uh, as we said, a lot of these things are just hitting previous highs. This is going back into the gap lower from February 5th. That gap lower had 14 and a half million shares. Yesterday, we had 5 million shares. Today, filling about half that gap at about 4 million shares. Uh, here's where you're going to probably, well, you're going to be able to look at a lot of stocks uh, that are filling a lot of these gaps on very light volume. And, uh, you know, it, at worst, you're probably going to see a slightly higher uh, move into that next week. Uh, but that may continue with very light, if any kind of volume. So uh, that's about it for this segment. We've got a lot more stocks to look at. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And of course, you can always put a message in the den. in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. To Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back, got an email. Uh, this one says, Dave, it seems you know a lot about nuclear power. And uh, you uh, said that there was a big problem with the Chernobyl movie. Mostly, like I said, it was kind of laughable that uh, it could blow up like a nuclear bomb at 8% uh, enrichment for what they were using for nuclear power at the time. Um, but... Uh, he basically, I'm going to paraphrase this email question about if you've seen the movie, they talk a lot about the tips of the uh, control rods uh, having uh, basically an accelerator on them. And that's not the way that those reactors were actually designed. Um, to talk about Chernobyl, you really have to say how people were were trying to cut every corner in the cost of actually making the thing. Uh, imagine if you could not push on the accelerator uh, without letting go of the brake or push on the, the brake without letting go of the accelerator. There wasn't a tip. Uh, basically, the accelerator and brake were on the same pole. And if you pulled up uh, the accelerator, you inst instantly slammed on the brakes. And if you... Uh, if you added the accelerator, you had to let off the brakes. So, so literally, they were connected on the same rod. So it wasn't a tip. It was literally that the moderators got pulled back in uh, to the control uh, booth. And it was actually uh, something that was a design flaw that they actually fixed later. And they kind of brought that up in the movie. But they glossed over the fact that actually those two things were connected. Uh, they were on the same long pole, and it didn't make a lot of sense. But uh, again, when you get a horse designed by a committee, uh, which is exactly uh, like the Central Committee in Soviet Russia, that is the way you get things designed. Problematic at best. Um, fairly quiet day out here continues. Uh, we're just flat at 2953, uh, 59. Uh, question in here, am I long or short? Um, I've got some uh, puts, or not puts, I've got some bearish calls that I'm sitting on here for expiration today, but that's about it. Um, I could lose all of 55 or 60 cents, uh, but we shall see. I'm basically flat at the moment. Maybe a dime higher on some uh, last minute uh, options. Uh, but the rest of my long-term positions, I am continuing to hold in the uh, Tech Insider. 
Uh, I pruned one off this week that just wasn't working. It didn't lose money. But at the same time, uh, if it's not doing well and you get to the top of the markets, uh, that's not a stock you probably want to hold. So uh, actually pruned a little bit, uh, but the rest are all doing well, which is three in the Tech Insider right now. And those are my long-term picks. But uh, yeah, one was up yeah, earlier in the week, almost 30 percent. Uh, from uh, just a buy back at the lows. So things uh, coming along in the newsletters. We'll see the rest. And now the question is if there's any real money to be made in the next week as we go into that, uh, uh, well, semi-trade talks back in Japan uh, come the 29th. My guess is that they'll just continue to put the pressure a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And, of course, uh, anybody has the ability to about crash the markets if they would say something uh, rather untoward, I think, now. Uh, to, to, to what else do we have? Uh, take a look at a few stocks. Uh, to, 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 to. What is this? Uh, GPRE, Great Plains Renewable Energy. Uh, don't see a lot in this one either. Uh, let's take a look here. Um, I mean, you had the huge gap down on the 19th, kind of testing it today with not much volume. But it's kind of a light volume stock to begin with, so I can't say that there's a lot in that for John who asked. Uh, other questions. IGT, which is the uh, International Game Technology. Um, you know, you still need one more test of about 1231 in that. Uh, Illumina, which is I-L-M-N, the DNA company. Uh, a lot of uh, advancements in this sector coming. I don't know if it's going to affect Illumina. It's kind of hard to tell. But uh, December 4th, you had uh, $356.88, 1.6 million shares. Uh, and you're getting into that with uh, a little less than a million right now. So you are going to have some light volume tests. These things are going to have to go. Other other wacko stocks, uh, Intuitive Surgical came off the $455.15 low on June 3rd. Uh, energy is, uh, again, tepid. You're right back into these huge down days of the uh, April 17th bludgeoning. I think this happened just kind of after earnings. Uh, 416th, uh, April 16th, uh, April 17th. Uh, 900,000 shares, uh, 1.7 million shares into it yesterday with 900,000 shares. Today, just 430,000 shares. So again, can you go higher? You probably can. But with all that downside action, you're going to either have to have incredible news or it's going to have to sit there and chew its way. And of course, uh, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? And uh, that's uh, when you've got that kind of overhead volume on the way down, uh, the only way through it is one bite at a time. Generally, you just don't get past it, uh, at least in stocks like ISRG. It's never easy. Like I can turn a Tina Turner. They don't like to do things easy. They like to do things hard. IYE. Um, again, now this one, uh, we're right up if you were looking for uh, a place to short energy, um, it doesn't get any better than this for risk reward. There is a great, nice confluence area that, uh, at least on this one, showing 34.48 to 35.05. Uh, and as long as you uh, close under that level, you're fine. So you can have a fairly close um, stop in these. Uh, overall, I'm not sure. Uh, more interesting to me is the risk reward. And that is on confluence levels where you have two different Fibonacci uh, sequences that are basically giving uh, a very small range like this one, which is about what, 50, 45 cents. Uh, that's about it. And of course, you're running back in to a right hand, uh, or excuse me, a left hand move from May 2nd all the way to 
May 22nd when this thing went sideways before it fell apart, went down to the low on May 31st. You're just coming back up to that gap. That gap happened on 600,000 shares on the way down. You got about 422 today on that action. You went pretty much on the wick, closed that entire gap. Uh, and, uh, you know, as long as it didn't close above 3505, that is maximum resistance. And you just put your stop on the other side of that. Very good confluence level. Uh, just uh, take a look at Tom's book on confluence. We'll be back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And see what else do we have. Question about Netflix, NFLX. Um, and that is it. You're back into the wick of the May 22nd push. That was uh, 6.2 million shares today. So far, you got about 4.6. So it's not bad. Uh, it looks to me like they're going to try to push this back up into this gap uh, that's been around for a while, uh, which is about 390. Uh, so far, energy is okay. It's not great. Neither fish nor fowl at the moment. And we'll look at a few other ones. Uh, got a question to look at uh, MasterCard. Uh, still no break uh, for this trend line that started on December 24th of last year at 
still kind of up here at uh, 2.2 million shares today. But um, you had kind of a little dip on the third, but that was it. Uh, closed right back into the trend line and still don't have any signal that says credit cards are going the way of the dodo uh, and just the opposite. Uh, well, one last question was about FDX. Uh, we're going to talk about this with uh, Tom O'Brien, but uh, they still have a lot of problems, uh, both them and FedEx, from a variety of uh, enemies. Uh, but numero uno is Amazon, and we'll talk about that uh, today at 3.30 with Tom O'Brien as we wrap the weekend up in the last hour of trading. 29.54. And 95 cents is the last tick on the SP cash. A whole lot of nothing so far. And again, uh, volume not that much. Options roll over Monday and Tuesday, back to trading and probably light volume running into the G20 meeting and uh, the trade talks next week. So a lot of action, but probably thin volume all next week. So when you can, not when you have to. See you here Monday, same bat channel, same bat time.